Why does this have almost 2 million views? 10 minutes on the clock. 10 on the clock this time. And this isn't going to be one of those, like, what's wrong with you kind of conversations. This is going to be probably more in the, like, maybe y'all don't know what you don't know, just because the world of bulk printing is kind of nutty, um, and I want to share a little bit of insight. The reason for that, let's provide some quick context, is that the Outsiders release for Flesh and Blood has a bit of a god box problem in the Belgium printing, and some people are saying, like, maybe this was intentional, and the fact that it's not the Japanese version is pretty clear that it's not intentional. So, mm, let's talk about possible areas of the breakdown, because there's a lot of people saying there's an issue with the production process, and you can get a little bit deeper than that, because that's the difference between this is something that can have an answer and can have some sort of, you know, process to make it better that I would hope to see from LSS or oops, all regicides. That was actually also something that could be QA. But it's not a matter of I pushed a button and bad things happened. Um, now, the reason I'm bringing this part up uh, is because I got this stupid thing. And it's funny how many times I'm able to bring this up for weird reasons. I graduated with a graphic design degree in 2006. And if you graduated with a bachelor's in graphic design in pretty much pre-2010, chances are you had to take production classes, but they weren't called production classes, were they, everybody? They were called pre-production and post-production, also known as pre-press and post-press. Let's talk about the difference between the three, and then I'm going to share kind of where this issue could lie and why it's important to kind of know that, um, because it does provide opportunities to move forward. So here we go. Pre-press, real quick. Pre-press is setting up of files and and making sure like everything is good from a color correction you know color perspective and like you have crop marks in the right place and, and all of that it's also figuring out like you know when you have a big when you have a big um you know project you're not printing card by card by card you print a big sheet and they come in either like 10 by 10 so you get 100 cards in a sheet or the most common one is 11 by 10 so you got 110 cards in a sheet and if you're wondering where the heck that comes from it comes from these guys the the, the bicycle decks because normally a, a pack of these things is you know about 50 54 cards 52 deck and two jokers um so you get two decks on a sheet there you go that's your 110 um huzzah anyway so that's making sure like the sheets are good, figuring out how many sheets you're going to have. So that way, when you do the collation process, they're all very random. You can't really map them, stuff like that. And then, you know, getting them over to the printer itself. And then they take over and that's called the production process. That's the actual printing and, and, and going through like the drums and the rollers and the finishes and getting the cards to getting the pages, the sheets to card form, cutting corners, things like that. Not like cutting corners, but cutting, you know what I mean? Anyway, post-production. That's the collation process. So, whew, sorry, sorry. It's a lot of breath real fast. I'm trying to say a lot in a short amount of time. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, post-production. That's the collation. That's, that's like the rest of it, the packaging and, and things like that. So that's the issue that I want to focus in on and talk about like how does that process work um, and how do we look at it and say something can in fact be resolved because I am not of the mind that says somebody hit, uh, hit a boo-boo button um, though it's, it's possible and here's why. So when you have a big process, a big production, think about seeing an uncut sheet, right? And you have your uncut sheets of 110 is how flesh and blood does it. Now don't think of them per se as like individual cards. Think of them as slots. So an entire sheet, a sheet is slot one and the one below it is slot two and then three and then four and then so on. And then their individual positions on the card are formulated to show up X number of times. So I'm going to create a bunch of booster packs and I'm going to say that in you know every three packs, pull from slot, you know, slot one comes from position one on sheet one. And then every, you know, every three, you know, and then every three packs, it pulls from slot two on position or slot or position, two, slot one is position two on sheet one. And then slot one is position three on sheet one. It gets real complicated. Um, but you build an ag algorithm based off of those types of things. And you can also split it up where I have a sheet that has 110 cards and I want these 40 cards, these 40 slots to appear in slot one every X packs, things like that. So mm -hmm, that's, that's essentially how that process works. 
And then you have like multiple sheets. So slot one may have like 10 sheets associated with it. Um, so if you look at, if you, if you imagine like an uncut sheet, I'll show you, we'll show you this one. Um, I'll show you this one. So if you would imagine an uncut sheet that is just has 10 different variations of this that are all stacked and this is slot 11 and I say sheet one needs to show up 10 times, you know, grab from like the next slot every 10th pack or something like that. That's how you get into the randomization. And what could have happened with something like legendaries is maybe legendaries had like slots one through 30, right? We'll just magically say, hey, one through 30 or one through one through 20 were the legendaries and the fables. And normally it should be, we'll say like slot 11 of the, of the pack, of the pack, slot 11 of the pack, pull from sheet nine, which is the legendary sheet, slot one every 47 times or some, some weird thing. And then pull from, you know, sheet nine, slot two or p p position two every, you know, 40, you know, every 47 times. And that's how you get like legendary slotted very, very randomly into packs. Um, and from there, it's a matter of like, okay, did somebody screw up that formula that said, oops, instead of like every 47 times, it's like every like four or something like that. Or, you know, pull from sheet, you know, pull from sheet nine instead of, you know, maybe like the numbers got reversed of instead of pull once every 47 times, it's every 47 times pull once. Um, stuff like that. That's like that. It could just be a number of, it could be a reversal in how many times do you access this sheet? And then how many times do you print those cards? I feel it was kind of a reversal of like, hey, every 47 boxes, you were supposed to pick one of these things, but instead you, you, you picked slot one, you, you, you picked it once, like you went through like every 47 times. It's, it's a, it, like whatever. I'm gonna editing Joe this one real quick. I'm not even gonna worry about the microphone. Uh, I want to expand on that concept just because I know that there's kind of a two little kind of quick counters to it. Counters in in concept is that one, some cases did have legendaries, like they did, uh, and then number two is the idea that well, not every single pack in a god pack had a legendary. So here's kind of both of those. Number one, when you make up your one in blank pack packs formula, it's not that you only have like one that has a legendary. And that's why you get some cases that maybe have multiples of them. Um, so you might have like a one in 47 packs has a legendary in it. And then you might go like really big in the, like maybe also one in every 187 packs also has a legendary in it or one in every 94 packs hits the next slot and kind of like a three sheet rotation. So, you know, slot 11, you know, so um, let's say sheet seven, eight, and nine um, have some legendaries that trickle in. And then like sheet nine is like the all legendaries um, sheet. And that's accessed a lot less frequency, frequently than the others. But like every 72 packs or something, I would access the next slot from sheet eight, which might have like rare, rare, legendary, or rare, 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 legendary. Um, so that might be kind of an element of maybe not every single pack had those. And that might be why you always had like a certain number of like 12, 13, 14, because it just so happens that whatever like you know, the 181st pack, for example, uh, which is, you know, 47 times four. So every fourth pack in a god box, in fact, actually didn't access sheet nine. It was told to access like sheet seven because there was a formula that said, hey, every 181st pack, go and access sheet seven and said, um, and that might be a rare or a common or something like that. And then, you know, every 181st pack after that, like, you know, grab the next slot from sheet seven or sheet eight. Like, so that's, that's kind of why that it could be very, you know, could be a little bit different, but that's kind of the concept of, of both of those. You can have multiple one out of blank packs has legendary, and then sometimes they just overlap with what I think this issue was, which is why sometimes you had a, you know, a few packs that were not a legendary, even though this, the algorithm is going through the full rotation. Gotta hope that made sense, because the whole thing is a mess. Good luck. Anyway, that's kind of an avenue of like, okay, that's a QA checkable kind of thing where you can review and be like, all right, let's make sure that the formula is inserted correctly into the system. And that's something that can happen pre-press or can happen post-press. Um, it doesn't really matter which, because like once it's printed and cut, it's just a matter of sorting the damn thing correctly. And I feel that just got sorted incorrectly, and that is something that is checkable.
you can check that and review that. So here's the reason that I feel like LSS should probably be account, you know, not held accountable per se, but also like kind of at least learn something and show this. And it has to do with surgical extraction and regicide because we had a similar kind of issue. During the production process for Dynasty, an issue occurred where the card number file resulted in surgical extraction and regicide switching places in the file. Now, this is different than switching places maybe in the collation order, because chances are this was like the way that it usually works is you can you can kind of make a you know, procedurally create your file. So it's not like I'm taking my card file and then I'm like positioning it in design. I can actually have a process that says, you know, here's the card number and then here's a formula to position it on the sheet so that way I don't have to like manually make like 90 sheets of 110 cards a piece. That's a pain in the ass. So I can procedurally do it. And I assign each card a number that says when this number comes up, it goes in this slot. And surgical extraction registry just whoopsie. And you can do the same, you can say the same thing about accessing a sheet and a slot X number of times. You swap those, and that would explain why instead of having 15 legendary split amongst like 40 cases, you have 40, you have 15, you you have like them all put into one. Instead, every like 40 times. Oopsie, it's a number switch. Right? Um, those are things that are checkable. And you look at like a formula, the production process where the card number file switch places on the file, that is clearly an issue that happened in pre-production. That is something that happened before the files were sent over to the printing because you were creating the file. That's pre-press. This is a post-press issue. So this is not a trending, I wouldn't call this a trending issue. And that's something really important to look back on is you look at the issues for, for fab, like printing issues, the you know, crew had like scuff marks out the ass. That's a production issue. That's in the production stage, right? And then in like Monarch, it was centering issues and and like it was just bad and like cutting issues. Again, that's the production process, right? So that, mm -hmm. And then you fast forward to things like this dynasty issue with the surgical extraction regicide. That's not the production process. That was actually pre-production process, the assembly of the file. And in this case, the collation aspect of it, this is something that happened in the post-production process. So, cause it's just the formula got screwed up and that is something that happened. That is something that affected the post-production. So the reason I, you know, I just, I wanted to like share all of that with y'all of, there are three phases. And I hope that when LSS kind of comes forward and says, Hey, here's kind of what we discovered. I would hope to see some sort of element of this is how we're going to proceed going forward in the production process to ensure that these kinds of things don't happen.